How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to do a basic setup of Docker on Debian. I will also show an optional but helpful Docker management platform called Portainer. The goal of this video is to get you started with a nice clean Docker base to build upon. To begin, I will be showing this using Debian 11.6. You can certainly do this on Ubuntu as well, and I will mention the areas that need to be changed if you are on Ubuntu. If you don't have either Debian or Ubuntu built up yet, then check out my previous videos on getting those started in the description below. All the websites I'll be showing, I will have links in the description below as well. Anyhow, let's get started. So everything I'm going to be showing you is going to be based on the Docker engine on Debian wiki here, and then as well as the Portainer page, which I will go into more detail on this after we get Docker installed. For a very easy setup, I will have my command script linked in the description below as well. So it's just an easy copy and paste simulator, essentially. So here I am SSH'd into my Debian server via PuTTY. And so to begin, I need to go ahead and elevate my privileges. So I'm going to type in SU, enter. I'm going to go ahead and type in the password for my root account. And the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to kick off a sudo apt update. Hit enter. And if you see this, the repository CD-ROM blah 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 does not have a release file, we're actually going to go ahead and correct this so that this doesn't haunt us moving forward. Now, this is optional. You could go ahead and just keep a handy thumb drive or CD or DVD on hand that has the install media on it, but we're just going to go ahead and nip this in the bud right now. So we're going to go ahead and change the sources list in Debian. So we're going to go ahead and do sudo nano etc apt sources dot list hit enter. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and down arrow to this section here where it says deb cd-rom and we are just going to go ahead and put a pound sign on here to comment it out which is going to remove it from the source list essentially now we are going to do a control o to write out file name to write that looks fine hit enter and then control x to exit so now that setting has been configured so we'll go back to the docker section here all right, next up, we will go ahead and kick off line three. Paste that right in, hit enter. Next, let's go ahead and kick off line five and hit enter. Next, we're going to kick off line seven. And real quick, I will show you. So if you are using Ubuntu, then you would just go ahead and change this portion right here out. And also the line five command, I forgot to mention this portion here as well for Debian. So just put in. Ubuntu for here, for line five, and then Ubuntu here instead of Debian, and then it will be happy. So we'll go ahead and paste in line seven here, hit enter, and then let's do another sudo apt update from line nine, paste that in, enter, and then let's go ahead and kick off line 11, and hit enter. Depending on the speed of your machine, it could take a little bit here, just be patient. All right. So at this point in time, we now have the base Docker foundation built. And so now we're going to go ahead and move on to the optional component, which is utilizing Portainer. If you haven't used it before, it does give just a nice GUI interface for managing it through your web browser. And we'll go over more of that shortly. So just to show you, so on Portainer's website here, we are going to utilize the community edition, which is the free edition, which is great for home lab users and whatnot. Obviously, the business edition is meant if you actually have a business and you're using a business environment for it. So we're going to click on install Portainer CE now, and then we're going to click on set up a new Portainer CE server installation, Docker standalone, install Portainer CE with Docker on Linux. And then this is going to go ahead and give you a nice guide that you can follow. However, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and leave a document in the description below, which will just be the easy copy paste simulator again. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to the Portainer document I have here. 
So next up, we are going to go ahead and copy line one out. Let's create the volume. Hit enter. Next, we're going to run line three, which is actually going to pull Portainer down as a Docker container. So this is our very first Docker container that we are going to add to the base Docker install here. So hit enter and just be patient. All right, so next up, now that the container is pulled down, it should be actively running. Now what I've got listed here for line five is to log in via browser, localhost at port 9443. Basically just go ahead and change out the local host with your server's IP. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my browser here. And it's gonna say the connection is not private, so we'll click advanced, continue. And so this, since this is the very first time that we are logging into it, we are going to go ahead and set up a password. This is also your opportunity to go ahead and change up the username as well. For this demonstration, I'm, I am going to leave it as admin for right now, and then I'm gonna put a password in. And then this is of course optional down here, allow collection of anonymous statistics, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. This is also your opportunity that if you had a backup, you can go ahead and restore it down here. However, this is a clean slate. So we're going to go back to the new Portainer installation and we'll hit create user. And so there are a lot of advanced features within Portainer. I'm just going to go ahead and go over the very basics today. I'll show off more in my videos to come, but for now, let's just go over the very basics. So clicking on home, We'll go ahead and show your current server here that's connected. It shows the state of it. So it is powered on, it's not powered off, it's currently up. We can go ahead and click into it here. And then if we click on containers, then it shows our one and only Docker container that's currently running, which is Portainer itself. And the status is running. And there's all sorts of quick actions you can do. You'll be able to see the logs inspect it, stats, execute a console, and attach console. It's going to show your date created, the IP address, the ports that are being used, the ownership of it. And what's nice is that if this wasn't Portainer itself and there was another Docker container listed here, then I could go ahead and click its checkbox and then it would open up all these options up here. And so if it's off, you can start it, you can stop it. If it's seized, you can kill it. If for some reason you need to restart it, you've got the restart option. You can pause it and you can resume it. And then of course you can also remove it. And then there's also the option to add a container here using the GUI interface. And then over here, what looks like a, a window of sorts, you can click this and this is your column selection. And then the dots over here would be your table settings. And I recommend doing auto refresh. You can keep it at 10 seconds. That way you can actually see live what's happening here. Otherwise you have to manually refresh this page to see it. So if you're trying to see if some sort of container is acting weird, then you're going to want that refresh on to watch the state. So let's go back to dashboard here. So you've got stacks, you've got image, you got networks, the volume. You can see here that Portainer is only using little under 300 megs here for the image. And if we go over here to app templates, and you can actually see applications that you could pull down here. Lots and lots of stuff listed here. So feel free to check all that out. You can also search for a template up here. You go to custom templates, which you can add a custom template if you wanted to. Stacks I won't be going over. Images just goes to show the images and what size they're using when they're created also shows their hashes networks volumes and then you can take a look at your events and then you can go ahead and click on host and then this gives you the information of obviously the host server that everything is being hosted off of and you go to setup and there's going to be all sorts of good stuff in here and you'll notice that there are certain features that can only be used with business edition that will have this little flag on it. We'll go to registries. And so this is where it currently just has set up to be able to pull down Docker containers. Now let's go to users. And so in here, you can go ahead and do user creation, and then you can toggle it if you want the user to be an administrator. If you have team set up, then you would be able to have options here. 
So if you had team set up here, then you can go ahead and bind them to the user. And then you can go ahead and set up roles, which as you can see, a lot of these are business edition only features. We can go to environments and then groups. We don't have any environmental groups. We don't have any tags here. Like I said, we won't be going over this. I'm just opening things just to show you. Registries, once again, it's just docker.io and it's a business edition feature here for actions. Authentication logs, business edition feature. Activity logs, business edition feature. Notifications, there's no notifications right now. We can go to settings and there's all sorts of things that you can take a gander at here. Set up SSL certificates, creating hidden containers. We can go to authentication. And unless you're doing anything extreme, then really internal is what you're going to be using here. You can set password rules, edge compute. There's a number of features that can be enabled or disabled in here. Helping about just goes ahead and launches the Portainer website here to where you can dig into their documents and their knowledge base. So that is it for at least that portion. Now I do want to go ahead and show you the process of updating Docker. All right, so let's say that you have an outdated version of Portainer that you want to go ahead and update. So what we can do is we'll go ahead and kick off line 12 and just this segment of it. This is just a notes section right here. We'll copy this, paste it in to a list. So here is our current list of Docker containers. And obviously it's only Portainer on this one. All right, so let's go ahead and go to line 16 here. So we need to go ahead and stop the Portainer container before we can go ahead and remove it to re-pull it with the newest version. So line 16, we're going to go ahead and just copy this portion here. The four X's are just where you would import the ID for the container in. So we'll paste that in to a space. And then here is the container ID that we need to add in. So we will paste that right on the end. Go ahead and make sure there's no space on the end of the ID. Hit enter. Now let's go ahead and do up arrow to do the docker ps a again. Hit enter. And so as you see before, the status was up three minutes. Now it is exited seven seconds ago. Next, let's go down to line 20, copy Docker RM, paste it in. And again, let's go ahead and snag the container ID, paste it, get rid of the space on the end. And I'm just going to add a space after the M. I'll hit enter. Now, if we do up arrow again for the Docker space PS space dash A, then we'll hit enter. And now there is no portainer container left here. So now let's go ahead and copy in line 22, paste it in, hit enter. And now let's go back using the up arrow and let's do the Docker PS A again, hit enter. And now we are back in business with the portainer container back here. Now we go back to the web portal. And as you notice here, it still has the username and password field and it's not telling us that we have to set up again. So the credentials that you previously had, it still has the configurations for. So let's type those in now. And so here we are, we're just back in business. Now, quite frankly, to actually really properly do that, I would strongly recommend doing a backup of your configurations, which you would find by going to settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then there's the backup portainer section here. And so you would click download backup file, and then you would click on download backup down here. You can also password protect it if you really wanted to. That's a just in case the volume data gets mangled in some way. Anyhow, that's all it takes to get the basics set up. If you found this video to be useful, please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. I will be showing off many Docker based projects in the near future, so keep an eye out for them. And certainly feel free to check out the rest of my videos on my channel as there's all sorts of very interesting, but sometimes niche projects that I show off. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.